So, um, John Lloyd Lucas sent me a question through on Facebook, I shot a YouTube, and um, I worked out that he's actually looking for three solutions here. Um, the order he's put them in, I'm not going to address them in the order because I think that some of these are more difficult than others. So we've got uh, create a flow chart uh, for the problem and read 10 names in and store these uh, in an array, sort them out ascending, that's fairly straightforward. Uh, this one here, 10 names for their ages, sort the eight by ages, that's okay. Uh, with the name of the student, that makes it more complex, which we shall look at in a sec. Uh, a procedure um, called circle that accepts a radius. Um, and then compute the area, the circumference and the diameter. I think I forgot area, actually, I have to do that. Uh, and then um, uh, one here, gender, takes in um, M or F and displays male or female. Um, that's by far the most simplest one. That one's uh, second simplest. That's third. That's by far the most challenging. So let's first of all have a look at uh, his question four. So if I open up uh, John question four, okay, this is fairly straightforward. Um, we've got the code, input the code, call the function code, gender, sorry, with the code. If we go into gender, it's just a nested if. So the code comes in, if the code's male, and I'm checking for upper or lower case, I'm not doing anything fancy, just using a, an or. If it's true, output male, job done. If it's not, check if it's false. Uh, sorry, if it's if it's um, female, if it is there, uh, and I just threw a. I think you should always have an else in there. So I've done a, an unknown code. So if we run that, and I choose M, I get male. F gives me female, and uh, I gives me unknown. So that's a straightforward one for the fourth question. Just here. Okay, so now let's have a look at this area of a circle which I'll modify while we're here. So if I open that one, that's question three. Same idea, look, input the radius, call the circle function with the radius. Here's the circle. Now I didn't do the area, so I'll add this, so I'll declare area. I missed that bit out. I'll make that a real. We'll assign area. Area is pi r squared, so it's 3.14 times radius. Times radius. And don't forget how you call it in the States, but we call it bid mass. I think it's PEMDAS, is it over there? So that's our, our brackets there to do that bit. And I'll stick the area um, in here. So ampersand area ampersand area. That's what area it is. Okay, so there we go. Diameter is two times the radius. Circumference is pi r squared. Sorry, circumference is two pi r, and uh, area is pi r squared. And then just a, a formatted output. So if we run it, I have 10. Okay. So that's that one. Now the next one, that's this one um, here. Going to need, that's certainly array, that's easy. We're going to need to do a bubble sort. Now I'm going to go through this, but I'm not going to. Um, go into any great deal t detail on how the bubble sort works because I've got a video that you can look at that details how to do a bubble sort properly and talks through it so you can look at that yourself so if I just open up the program so this is number one okay so there's my array of ten items empty it inputs the 10 using a counter, it populates the array. Uh, what I'm doing there. Oh, I was going to output them there, but I didn't bother. Um, just to show that they were all there. Doesn't need.
need to do that. I can take that bit out. I don't need that. Okay, calls my um, calls my bubble sort. Goes to the bubble sort, and this here, which you can have a look at, I'll leave it there slowly. I'm not going to talk through it. Is the function that does the bubble sort. By all means, look at my other bubble sort video that talks through it properly. So let's run it. So ten names. So if I do, uh, I'll just do it as letters. Uh, w D C B A uh, R T Q. Okay. If I just bring up the variable list. Uh, Z and F. You can see there they are. Look, all ten of them not alphabetically. Carry the function on, and there you can see they've been sorted alphabetically. I didn't finish off the flowcharts to, to print them out, but you just need a for loop. Once you come back to the main code, just want a for loop here to uh, to print them all out. But I'll leave that for you to figure out. It's it's fairly straightforward. So. We then come to this one here, which is pretty challenging. So the first bit's the same. It's the inputs, and it's another input with an array for the ages. But we can't do a uh, two-dimensional array in flow rhythm. We have to do this as two single arrays that we're dealing with in parallel, which makes it a little bit trickier. So let's look through the code. So that was question number two. Okay, so here's me doing the, the two arrays, here's me inputting just like before, again I don't know why I put that in. There's the, um, the, the call and this is the output look and that's just how you do it, that's a, a for loop for the output. Now if we look at the bubble sort, this time I'm passing it two parameters, age and name. So I've made a modification to the bubble sort. And the only changes are down here in this section here. So it sorts as normal, okay. But temp two is going to contain um, the the names. So I sort on the numbers. Temp two contains the names. And as I swap in the bubble for temp two, the one that contains the names, I just move that into the equivalent place in the other array. So if we swap. Um, one and three round to give us three and one whatever letters in the corresponding names array will also swap accordingly so it's a little bit complicated to get your head around so I think you're gonna have to code it in run through it a few times and just see what's happening um, if I run it I think what I'll do to run it just to speed the process up a little bit is I'll have less people, so I'll have five names and five of those, and I'll do that five times just to speed up this process. So if I bring up the list and run the program, I've got a breakpoint here, so it'll stop just before the bubble, and I'll put a breakpoint in here as well. So we run it through, get the five names in, so we'll have um, Fred, who can be um, 10. Barney, who can be 5. Um, Wilma, who can be 2. Um, Betty, who can be 4. And Bam Bam, who can be one okay so the youngest ascending order so the youngest is bam bam so we should get bam bam one when it sorts through and we should finish with fred 10 at the other end okay so it's going to flip them around so if we step through it we can see as it starts to sort things the values in here are changing as the bubble sort happens and the corresponding numbers up here are also changing oops I stepped through that too quick let's just do that again so Fred might be different numbers this time I'll never remember Fred 10 Wilma 5 
Getty. Three. Pebbles. Two. Pam Pam. One. So this time I've got Fred as the oldest, Bam Bam as the youngest. So if I step through the next bit, okay, so you can see they're changing. So as something changes on here, they swap round on there. Okay, these the, there's the temp variable there. Look, that's that's storing the uh, um, the numbers as I swap them. You can talk through the bubble sort, look through the bubble sort yourself. Okay, but as I run that through, you can see we've got uh, Fred and ten and Bam Bam and one now in the right order in the ascending order. And if I run this through. Finally, I should get my ascending order printout. So that's a little bit more complicated. Um, it's quite a difficult challenge. It's about keeping these two arrays indexed uh, in sequence. But as I say, it's all done using a normal bubble sort. And all I'm doing is adding the extra swap within that array, in that loop. So again, watch the bubble sort video and it'll make more sense, I'm sure. But I hope that helps, John. That is the, uh, the answers to your four questions. If you found that useful, buy me a coffee.